Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley, and I'm going to be playing as the Widows. My allies are going to be Bretonia and a force of the vampires. A raid against us. Oh my god, look at all these trebuchets getting underway. And there's going to be a pretty big missile exchange, especially because, look at this. The Chaos Force here has brought three Hell Cannons backed up by a bunch of Chaos Warriors in a big circle around it, so that's going to be our top priority, cracking this nut. Meanwhile, on their left side, they've brought even more artillery, two grudge throwers, uh, two, or just a flame cannon and a uh, regular cannon. So that's going to be a cr pretty crazy amount of artillery in the back. They've got a Vampire Counts Force with the Mortis engine here. So this is going to be pretty punishing for us. I mean, it has the ability to regen a lot of its units. So this has the potential to turn into a pretty deadly uh, blob here, especially with Crypt Whores and a lot of units in a white. Yeah, this could get pretty devastating. Um, on our sides, what have we brought? Well, I am tr plowing forward with Wild Riders, uh, two of them, and then a Sister of the Thorn Force. I've never really used this cavalry that much, but it's actually really cool. It's got two abilities that it can cast, uh, one to give you protection and one to strip away enemy movement and missile um, resistance. And these guys also come packing with some pretty powerful javelins, and I found them to be very useful in the few times that I've used them. I decided to bring them back after I read a post on Reddit, someone uh, talking about how these guys can be pretty powerful if microed correctly. And that's what you'll see me doing. Uh, what I'm going to use them is as an execution squad against enemy lords or units like these big crypt whores. Anyways, let's watch the exchange here. Knights of the Realm here are going to be targeted. Oh, they take a couple big punishing volleys. So we're going to have to press the assault here. Otherwise, we're going to trade pretty inefficiently. We've only got two field trebuchets. One is a blessed trebuchet, yes. But the rest of our guys are going to be whittled away. We definitely need to get into this fight. I don't know why these peasant archers are standing still. They're going to take constant bombardment. Two of them are already routing. This is not looking good for our guys as the battle gets underway. I'm going to go ahead and try and claim this position here. I try and juke out the artillery, but it proves very, very brutal. And so they're stripping away all our ranged forces. That's a good move. I had a couple more units back here, my Treekin, that I wanted to hide because I'm always being stupid and trying to have little psychological games with their opponents. Um, I wanted to keep them and as a surprise, but you'll see shortly I should have probably moved them into the battle <laughs> sooner rather than later. Anyways, what I'm doing is I'm pulling around the side. Getting my Glade Lord here and just taking some pot shots at this tight knit blob. The enemy is really keen on us not getting in. And now these Hell Cannons are going to pivot about and they're going to try and target my Sisters of the Thorn uh, and other Wild Riders. A lot of shots connect on this one. Um, it doesn't do as much damage as you think, mostly because I think I dodged that and I do uh, have a pretty big chunk of health on my guys. Now I get some Archers going to fire into this blob. But I've left them vulnerable to some Felbats, so I'm going to wheel about with my forces really quickly and try and intercept this. Let's see how many guys they kill. I'm down to 37 men here, and the other one is at 60. Don't expect it to do too much. Here I popped uh, plus 44 missile resistance, minus 20 melee defense. I'm not quite sure why I did that. I think I was worried about some shots coming in here. Um, but anyways, they're going to do a little bit more damage. One of these guys had died... And on this guy, I lose a little bit of health. So most of these Felbats have been blunted, which is pretty good. I'm pretty happy about that. Oh, God. Knights of the Realm here in Lance Formation, taking huge Hellblaster volleys. There goes half of the unit. Oh, God, this is not good. Charging straight into Hellblasters like this. Yikes. Recipe for a disaster. They're going to charge into Chaos Warriors, which is going to be okay initially. Um, but there are some halberd units in the back to reinforce. Oh god, this is such a freaking mess. Um, I do, with my units over here, try and cast a net on the Crypt Horrors. I want it to slow these forces down. They're going to come and pursue my units. Over here, the Felbats are getting um, tied down by my War Dancers, but they're starting to do their work. And now the Vampire Vanford Von, Kar Von Karstad actually is starting to raise dead in amongst my guys. Meanwhile, he's got another raise dead coming up through here in my archers, so I'm going to have to book it and get going. Uh, my Glade Lord's being chased by a White King and two White Kings, actually, both on steeds, and so this is not looking good for me. I am going to line up a rear charge on these Chaos Warriors, but I really need something to blunt this assault, and this is why I was telling you I was kicking myself in the butt. We're trying to do something a little bit fancy here with the tree kin hidden in the trees in the back. And yeah, I really wish I had brought these up. I don't know why I always try and pull little stupid moves like that because <laughs> more often than not, I pay for it. 
But anyway, so that's my state. I'm getting overrun by fell bats and zombies. It's not life-threatening, but it's enough to force me back and pull my units back. I'm going to get a nice strike here, but the rest of my forces here, uh, Sisters of the Thorn, are going to start to prick these Crypt Horrors, already doing a fair amount of damage uh, with their Javelin, so I'm pretty happy about that. Bretonia Minoha has gotten absolutely spanked in their assault. Uh, even Pegasus Knights in here, only one kill on them. 23 here, 4 there, really not trading well, and Chaos is just going to swarm them. A lot of Archers are going to be firing, Trebuchet is also firing, so maybe the units in the rear are getting cost effective, but not much of anyone else. Meanwhile, we're going to be swarming the Dwarves. Black Knights charging straight into two units of Slayers and Dwarf Warriors. That's not looking good, but at least we get two units of raised dead in and amongst the enemy. Oh god, but the flame cannon is too strong. Ooh, it's gonna start crumbling our flanks. I did bring around some sisters of some wild riders, excuse me, to hit the rear. So I'm gonna try and help our enemy more uh, this vampire lord going to town on raised dead. So my guys are gonna try and cripple the enemy um range units and it's going okay. Bretonia gonna come back in to help out as well and so it looks like we're gonna knock out this dwarf player pretty convincingly very quickly. In the center Bretonia is gonna be able to continue to tie down chaos with repeated strikes but for the most part they are now scot-free having dealt with the cav and now they can start to charge after the archers. Meanwhile my units in the back sisters of the thorn are gonna be going after Van uh, Manfred excuse me. And like I said I mean these um, projectiles do a lot of damage. However, the blob is starting to get underway. Sternsman, Graveguard, everything backed up by two White Kings and the Mortis Engine. Um, it's doing a lot of damage and it is just running rampant in my units. So I've tried to pull back with some of my forces. Archers are reforming. Wild Riders are circling about, but he is pummeling me. Meanwhile, my tree can finally crest the hill, but it's a little bit of too little too late at this point. They're going to start to clobber. Oh god, I'm getting hit. I'm going to start to clobber some of these units. Ah, and here, look at this. Manfred gets targeted. So that's both my Lord and Wild Riders working in tandem. Um, doing a ton of damage to Mar Manfred. He's already at half, half health. He's going to start to cast Invocation of Negeth to uh, Nehek, sorry, to try and get back up to full strength. It's starting to work, but I'm putting on a lot of hurt to him. Treekin are now going to try and continue to hold the front, but... you. Here comes the death blob charging in after me, plus halberds, that could be the end of my treekin, so they arrive too late, no cohesion in my force, leadership is dropping, attacked in the rear, yikes. Archers are starting to come back, and I can try and eliminate chaos warriors who've gotten themselves straggled out, but these trees are working against me, and so I'm going to drop pretty quick here without getting much done. I do pop some shields of the thorn. Uh, weapon damage goes up, so I'm just going to try and sustain my forces. Wild Rider's also going to be targeting uh, some of the key units in the back, and I've now trapped Manfred again. His hit points are dropping dangerously low. He's getting really nervous here, trying to cast some zombies, uh, raising the dead around him. And he's going to actually get off. Uh, I was stupid enough to leave my lord close, and Manfred does a spirit leech on me. So my health is dropping 478. Starts to get very, very low. But finally, I get uh, my unit out of range, um, just at 130 health, but that was dangerously close. Uh, I'm routing right now. I should come back, but this was still a very, very close run affair. At least I do have him tied down here. Meanwhile, looks like uh, the enemy lord has been killed. The dwarfs have been completely overrun. Their siege lines not standing up to the might of the vampires here. Vampires seem to be doing very well in multiplayer as of late. They're going to be able to swim back, swing back and try and help me out. Bretonia is virtually non-existent here, so it's kind of vampires cleaning me up. Uh, vampires cleaning up the dwarves, and in the center, a bit of a mutual obliteration between Chaos and Bretonia. Um, although it looks like Bretonia will come out with a couple extra units in the rear. They should survive this, uh, but that's, at the same time, Chaos also does still have a couple of its units. Um, Manfred is going to get caught with the net once again. That's my lord getting her final shots off here. And I'm going to try and focus fire on Van Manfred. I know, you know, this is a big death ball that we've got going here. The best way to kill a death blob is to chop off the head. The head right now is Manfred, so if I can beat him, hopefully the enemy will start to crumble. And it seems to be going pretty well. Uh, Curse of Anrahir here makes him get, uh, you know, less speed and less accuracy. Sorry, I thought that curse made you take more damage, but I guess I've been uh, misinformed or misremembered. But anyways, it 
does a lot of reduction to speed, so this will allow me to catch up to him and do a lot of damage. But meanwhile, the Death Blob and the, the Pain Train continues. So what do I have left? Well, a couple little units here and there. Treekin's still alive. They're mostly running away from two Chaos Warriors with Halberds. They're going to try and go after this Blob here. That's still doing pretty well. They've all been slowed down, so that spell doing work. I'm going to get a nice charge into the back of these infantry. And then I'm going to disengage. So it's going to be a game of whittling away this blob. 86 kills already. But I can't really engage much against uh, this Mortis engine. Especially Sternsman and Graveguard. This is very deadly. Treekin are going to commit themselves to this fight. But they're mostly doomed. Anyways. Sister of the, so of the Thorn here going to continue to chase away Manfred. Uh, he really wants to get his health back. And I'm going to try and prevent that. And so there goes another volley of projectiles. He's down to 220. I just need a couple more hits here uh, against him to take him out. Looks like the enemy has decided to stay still. He was trying to raise some dead to slow me down. I'm going to try and pull out of here, but he's being a very wily lord, and he's going to seek shelter within this blob. Meanwhile, my wild riders try and clean up the action here. Knock out these zombies with a nice clean charge. These guys are doing work. 104 kills to their name. That's all I've really got. A couple more units are going to be coming back. Um, Bretonia does commit his lord into the center and actually ends up killing uh, the enemy lord. So Vlad goes down there. So after I did a lot of the preliminary damage with the sisters, Bretonia comes and cleans it up. So I was pretty happy about that. But this death blob is going to turn pretty quickly on this lord. And he better get out of there. Otherwise he's going to, you know, die very quickly. He's trying to, but he's being completely surrounded. The enemy vampire force not letting him go. In the back, though, I'm doing a lot of cleaning up operations on the zombies, and so now it's just a matter of time before I can clean up the ancillary forces, and we just have to deal with this death blob. This is a whirling mass of undead. He's trying to, you know, get enough runway to take off, but this is a really, really scary position for him to be. These cryptors want to grab the wings of the Pegasus and impale them to the ground. I wonder if he's going to be able to take off, taking hits after hit after hit. Come on, keep pulling him out. There we go, finally looks like he's gotten out of that blob. So there we go, now we have an isolated uh, death blob going away. And they're going to move single-mindedly, one after another, trying to knock out my little units that are here and there. But at least for me, I'm happy they don't have a lord anymore, which is great. Um, they're tired, they're debilitated, the lord is dead. Binding is still good, mostly because the mortis engine is still here. But it means that we've taken out one of the key linchpins and only one perhaps remains, the mortis engine. So what is my plan? Well, I'm going to try and... I was going to retreat, but then I realized that, you know, my death is upon me for these units. And so I'm going to decide to just turn about and try and fire into this host. Oh, yikes. They're going to destroy me. You know, I'm going to try and hit the back, but these Chaos Warriors with Halberds turn about and they're going to do a lot of damage to my Wild Riders. I try and engage with Eternal Guards and I'm able to get uh, one of his units to start wavering, but mine is as well. So it's not looking good for my guys. All I have left now are two forces. Luckily the vampire allies of ours are coming into the fight. He's got a fair amount of troops in his own little death ball, but unfortunately we don't have anything here to regen health. So if our Lord goes down, this will almost immediately collapse. Uh, so we're in a pretty dangerous position where if these two blobs collapse on each other, I think the enemy will win. Bretonian is going to try and pull in with the remainder of his peasant bowmen. He's got a damsel and a lord still left. Some trebuchets also coming up. Um, there's a little bit of action taking place in the back, but not really too much. It looks like we do have the capacity to regen health, but the necromancer is way too far away. Meanwhile, the death blob is going to take place here. Looks like my ally is going to be doing a good job of targeting the chaos warriors with halberds. That's really awesome because it means my wild riders can be more effective. But the problem is... Yeah, at this point, the enemy White Kings have decided to commit against our forces. They're going to try and tie down all of the Bretronian troops. So we're going to charge in with our two Lords and Vampire. But the two Blobs have decided to duke it out. And in this type of engagement, like I said, our guys are going to lose here. So I really need to even this fight up. The enemy's doing a good job here. I really need to get into the fight with my Wild Riders, but Halberds are doing a good game of denial. Meanwhile, what I decide to do is, with my Sisters of the Thorn, I pull up, keep an eye on this White King. His health is going to start to drop pretty substantially. 
And so what I want them to do is get point blank range and just deal with the lords. Like I said, if we can take out the linchpins, linchpins, excuse me, that means this entire force will collapse. Looks like the enemy realizes the predicament they're in. And we did kill one of the white kings. Our vampire lord takes off because, like I said, we can't afford losing him. I pop the uh, shields of the thorn on our guys. And yeah, we've killed one white king and now I'm going to try and focus fire. Oh no, it looks like the other white king is still alive. But we're going to try and focus fire. Sisters of the Thorn, again, doing lots of damage with their projectiles. Trying to focus fire and the peasant bowman here being critical. And now this mortis engine is going down. The lord here doing his, uh, his very best to take out the enemy. And it looks like the circling vampire here. May decide to commit himself. Ooh, Cryptors are going down. And I believe... Yep. This Mortis engine is dangerously low. We lost our almost our entire infantry force. But it doesn't matter. Now it's a fight for the remaining uh, lords and heroes. It looks like we may lose our lord. I'm going to try and do a nice strike in the back to whittle away at the infantry while the enemy lords are distracted. But meanwhile, this Mortis engine, it's the only thing holding the enemy up. Ooh, and it blows up into a thousand pieces with this vampire lord getting into it so that is going to be the tipping point for this battle really closely run affair with the battle of the lords here in the center bertoni is going to lose a lord white king is still alive and it looks like our vampire lord could die so if they manage to knock out two of our heroes that could actually swing the, the battle back in their favor they have the stern spin a lot of infantry still left still with some halberds so good thing our vampire lord pulls out of that engagement uh this lord does as well thank god so now all the enemy has is a blob of infantry, and like we said, if we could take out the linchpins of the enemy heroes, that blob will amount to nothing. It is all crumbling away now as we speak. The only real unit left that can sustain are going to be these Chaos Warriors with Halberds, but even then, they're not going to stand up for much longer. And finally, our Necromancer pulls up to the stop, uh, to the shop a little bit too little too late, but he should be able to start healing. I get uh, Shields of Thorns as well. So that's going to shore up the remainder of our forces. And the White King going to be going down. Ooh, assisted very much by the Lord and my Sisters of the Thorn. Trying to see where the action is taking place. Looks like it's right among here in the bushes. This is where the White King will see uh, his final demise. And yet we killed him. And with that comes the full collapse. Yep, there we go. So that was an epic run battle. Very, very close here to the end. There is still this little uh, dwarf engineer moving around with a gun, seeing the carnage on the battlefield. Um, but he's going to have to flee in terror pretty soon. That was fun. I do have to say I'm pretty happy with how the Sisters of the Thorn, uh, m you know, held up this entire battle. They only have 57 kills, but a lot of that was Lord sniping and repeated charges, and I really like their morale. I wasn't expecting them to stand strong till the end of the battle, but they may have unbreakable traits. I'm not quite sure, actually, um, but it was really nice for them to stay st strong till the end, plus my Wild Riders. They were doing a lot of late game damage, uh, and that's one of the, the good things about these units, especially in the end game. They rely on micro, and when you have them just in, in the end game, when the enemy is weak, tired, and you know exhausted and exposed, that's where you probably have more time to spend microing, and the micro that you do have is that much more effective. So yeah, good thing to keep these guys alive to the late game. And I was surprised by just how much ammo they had. Really, really good stuff. Let's end the replay here and take a look at some of the final stats. Yeah, Wild Riders with 192, 78, 57 on Sisters of the Thorn. My tree in here were a complete waste. So I did a really bad job there. Archers really not doing too much. Uh, Eternal Guard doing okay, mostly against zombies though. So my force did decently. Um, not really good stuff. I mean, had I deployed all together, I probably could have rebuffed that vampire death ball before it got going. Uh, but unfortunately, I did uh, stupid deployment. Anyways, let's take a look at our ally. A uh, not too much being done, although the trebuchet is getting a lot of damage done. Um, so that's okay, I guess. Uh, vampires, I would have thought, did a lot of damage. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Black Knights, 114, 82, and 89. So yeah, they just raffle stomped. Uh, Dizzle's force here. Um, he did get a fair amount of kills on the gyro bomber, but the rest of it, eh, doing okay actually. Um, Chaos, yeah, not trading too well. So it looks like <laughs> Chaos and Bretonia both kind of traded against each other. If you match this up, looks like they got 
roughly comparable amounts of kills. So yeah, they knocked each other out. Uh, on my side, I got knocked out by this vampire force, who was probably the MVP, or sorry, I got knocked out by Kishev, who was probably the MVP. He had a fair amount of kills, not too much showing up on the scoreboard here, uh, but he was knocking my guys over pretty easily. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it went down. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I definitely recommend playing uh, with the Sisters of the Thorn. They're very fun. Uh, they can buff friendly units with that uh, Shields of the Thorn ability, but then also their uh, gen sniping and key unit sniping. I really, really uh, enjoy that. And then always, always bring a Wild Rider Force. I've never seen them not pay for themselves. Such good troops. Uh, very fast, nimble, and hard-hitting. So that's it for this battle. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.